John McConnell, underwaterrealestate.com and favoritrealestate.com. Uh, let me talk to you quickly about California's new short sale law. It's a blessing and a curse. When you see realtors going around saying, hey, no problem, we're going to get you released from the deficiency, you have to ask yourself a question. Is it really going to be that easy if there's two lenders? And we can tell you right now, it's not. We're getting calls all the time from realtors. The California Association of Realtors had a, uh, a video conference a week ago about, well, part of the conference discussed this problem. What can realtors do now that the seconds are holding out for more money than they can get from the first during the short sale negotiation? In the past, realtors would then come back hat in hand and say, dear Mr. Seller, we need more money from you to get you released from the deficiency. Where there were ways to do this ahead of time, they could set it up ahead of time where that wasn't going to happen frequently. It did. But now, because of CCP 580B's second section here, B, a holder of a note shall not require the trust or mortgage or the maker of the note to pay any additional compensation aside from the proceeds of the sale in exchange for the written consent of the sale. And if the second, if the owner were to pay money, would have to show up on the HUD. Now the first sees this number and they're blocking short sales. They're saying that's not acceptable to them. We've seen it happen in our own practice. We're getting calls from realtors and homeowners all over. This is no longer a job for inexperienced realtors or even experienced realtors without an attorney. You need to know what your options are ahead of time. You need to have a backup plan, a walk away strategy. You need to have a short payoff strategy. You need to take all, be prepared to take all your bites at the apple using California's anti-deficiency laws. And you need to set this, this up like a deck of cards or, or dominoes against the bank. At some point in time, you can start off your negotiations with the second nicely. You know, sugar catches more flies than, or honey catches more flies than, than whatever. You understand the, uh, the, the metaphor we're using here. Be nice. Get that negotiator on your side. Try to get the short sale accomplished. But on a significant number of these now, it is vital to have a letter coming from an attorney saying, my client is advised of his rights under California law. He's set up to properly leverage the law. And if you don't accept the short sale the way it is, we're going to assure you our client is now aware of how to make sure your investor gets no money. And besides, here's this other legal letter in which we demand that you explain who your investor is so we can go see whether your investor prefers zero after a foreclosure or after we reinstate with the first to the $5,000 they could get during the short sale or whatever it may be. I don't even mind sharing that strategy with you because the negotiations are so dynamic. That's just one of them. There are five, six, seven. A, a short sale is like a scalpel to a surgeon. You need to have, it's a short sale is not the only way to go. And even within that short sale, you need to be able to leverage a lot to get where you're going. So what we suggest is that you consider a two-step short sale, a short sale hybrid, a short payoff, and many of your other strategies before you go in to a short sale with your lender and expose your entire financial picture to them. Thank you, John McConnell, favoritrealestate.com and underwaterrealestate.com.